Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Today we're going over a very interesting build and that's the Ward Stacking Ascendant Miner. And the Ward is something that's been around for a while now but have not been really used that much except for Ward Loop builds. But now with the Calgary League and some new items that have been introduced we can finally have some good use for it. As of now I'm currently at around 40 million DPS with a pretty decent defensive pool as well. All capped resist including chaos, it got high block chance for both attack and spells, 25k ward and that goes even higher when we're using a iron flask here and the investment so far is around 25 divines so it's a pretty mediocre investment build at the moment. The build uses power siphon which is a one attack and the skill fires multiple projectile which generate and also have some extra bonuses from power charges and all one attacks got a pretty decent boost here as well and now they also get increased and reduced to spell damage will also apply to attack damage at 150% of its value which is really make a huge difference to this build. And then by linking this to Locust Mine support, the skill now converts to Mines instead. And the great things with Mines is that you can stay at a safe distance and deal damage off screen and it will also auto target enemies for you, making it kinda a brain dead build that you can zoom around with quite fast. But I use this mostly for bosses and it's really strong here as you can pre-cast all mines before a fight starts and in some cases you can even kill the bosses before they're able to do anything. And the biggest weakness of the build is going to be degen so you will still have to be careful about that but uh, we do have some mitigations for it. The power of the build comes from the unique Night Grip Gloves which give us flat chaos damage equal to 10% of our ward. And that's almost 2500 flat chaos damage with this current setup and uh, we still have some improvements that can be made here. To get tons of ward we also then use the new unique belt Undra Stand which gives us ward instead of 50% of armor and evasion rating from equipped body armor and this can be boosted up by 60% by using tempering catalyst on the belt. And you want to grab yourself a conquest laminal body armor for the hybrid armor and evasion and with a mid max chest you can get over 7k in total here which uh, then 60% of that will be transferred to flat ward instead. So this is where we get our main source of ward from but we need to scale it and here is where it gets kind of crazy. Fate Guard is another unique that we need to use for this build and this makes increase and reduction to maximum energy shield also applies to ward. So as you might figure out right now we want to have as much increased energy shield as we can and the interesting thing here is what you can do at the science starting point on the passive. So at the science skill tree we have three UL slots here that we are using and the first uh, UL that we want to grab is going to be Light of Meaning and this is with the passive skills in Radius also grant 3% increased energy shield so this gives us extra energy shield for all the nodes that are uh, inside of this area here this ring so we get these nodes here get extra we have a spell damage that get extra maximum energy shield we get global accuracy here with increased maximum energy shield so this is how this jewel is working basically and for the other two we are using Might of the Meek and this makes so it will increase the effect of non-keystove passives which is going to be all the small ones here that are allocated around us here and each increase by 50% so this will add up to 100% for those that are in this middle circle here and 50% for the outer circles here. And the good thing here is that these two and with the light of meaning combined these in the middle circle here will get boosted by 100% so instead of just providing 3% these deal 6% right they are 100% increased and that's how it works we get double from these nodes in this middle circle but what is also defense capable of taking damage from hits before life and energy shield. Breaking ward is uh, treating as uh, taking damage up to the value of your ward and by default the restoration of ward is normally 2 seconds uh, but we get some faster restoration from our helm and also from our boots here and this makes it so 
the ward restoration time for this build is around one second instead and the great thing with this is that you get your full amount up at once as long as you don't take any damage for one second and the ward will get up for it and that's where block really comes in handy here and uh, as you don't take any damage when you take a block and at the moment we are at 88 uh, block 2 attacks and 84 with spells and I just have a bad roll on my shield here at the moment and if you get a shield with some better rolls you will also be spell cap as well and uh, that's with lucky block which we're getting from this shield here Svalin shield and we also get flat ward from this shield as well and uh, we also trigger elemental spells here on block and we also get the downside that we lose 10% to max block for both attack and spells by using the shield but the lucky block is really worth it and for the rings that we are using you want to get as much attributes as possible and also resist and uh, you also want to have evasion rating on both of them which is really important and that's because of uh, the evasion and energy shield mastery and uh, this one provides 20% increased maximum energy shield if both rings have evasion on them and you can just use a essence of doubt that will fix that problem for you the boots are really basic really you want to get as much ward as possible here and just try to get your resist up and if we take a look on our weapon, it's uh, quite easy to craft this. As we're using a attack skill, we want as high crit chance on the base as possible. And uh, Prophecy Wand is great for this. And it also provides the highest increase to spell damage as the implicit. And this needs to be Hunter Influence Wand as well. And that's so you can get the flat chaos damage with chaos penetration. Which is going to boost the damage by a ton of this build. And basically all you want to do here is to spam as a tough woe until you get uh, the chaos pen and then hopefully also get the open prefix which you can then craft the extra chaos penetration on it as I did here. And also if you get increased to critical chance it's also quite important and I go in a little bit more about that in just a second. But if you take a look on our amulet we are using a Marlin's Fallacy and this is for the huge critical strike multiplier it provides but do keep in mind that you lose crit chance from this amulet and uh, that's where one comes in. If you don't have the crit chance you might be uh, better off uh, by using just a normal amulet instead of this one which just increase maximum energy shield, crit multi from essence and uh, just resist and attributes works as well. It's also really a bit uh, what content you want to go for here as well. If you're farming maps for example you might be better off with the normal amulet as he has mentioned and you will stay at 100% crit chance all of the time but uh, with Marlin's Fallacy you only be able to reach that if you are combining this with a bottle of faith flask here you get uh, tons of crit chance from this but you, you need to have enemies standing on the consecrated ground created from the flask right and uh, the bottle of faith is used more for bosses so you can easily one shot them and for the anoint you want to pick tranquility this is super important for the build this makes it so we get the increase to spell damage at 30% of the value of maximum energy shield so all the increase to maximum energy shield will just uh, apply to spell damage right huge for the build and is a must have if you really want to push those damage numbers now let's take a look on the passive tree that we are using and it's really not too complex actually with all the circles all around but I try to explain as good as I can here. So let's take a look down here. We covered the middle part here and uh, down here we have a uh, Elient Hubris Timeless Jewel with Caspiro and uh, with this number I believe there is another one you can get uh, three of those notables down here which will give you increased spell damage so we have uh, this one over here 80% spell damage another 80 down here and a third one down here and just to show you how you will find it if you go to your pub and for the purpose now I also picked up this node right here that's another uh, point that you can pick from right it's these four to choose from and what you want to go, you want to go for down here, find Timeless Jewel, and you will put Elegant Hubris here, Cardio, and choose the Unwavering Stance node. Click on the filter node here, and then press search. And as you can see, 
here is the number I'm using 154440 and other one is going to be this number here if you are going for a three increase spell damage and I got mine for one divine and we have two under a divine right now so if you are fast enough you can join them but uh, yeah those prices might go up uh, depending on the demand right that's just how it goes and uh, by picking up impossible escape and here you want to get unwavering stance and this is making it so we can pick these nodes up without being allocated to the tree right so that's how this works we have iron will make strength damage also applied to spell damage and uh, if we take a quick look on the middle tree here these roads here is the block nodes which are really important to make yourself cap your block and uh, then we also have these two right here and this gives accuracy which is needed to get you to 100% hit chance at least for me if you manage to get like uh, accuracy on your rings for example you might uh, be able to drop one point here but uh, these are still good to have as they do provide the increased maximum energy shield as well and I'm currently just putting my extra points in attack speed here and uh, that's just so we can use our shield charge a little bit more faster We're using the mine node right here and this is going to be for the mine throw speed quite important ones to pick up we have the uh, another mine here this is for crit multipliers we went over this wheel here and that's for the evasion and shield mastery with the rings and uh, we're picking up as much uh, frenzy and power charges as we can also up here because we get crit multi from that as well music bulk that's a uh, block to spell damage we have another one over here and then increased maximum energy shield right here with lastly the chaos damage and the damage penetration balance of terror is another yield that we are using and we get some elemental resist here but the important note is going to be inflict withered for two seconds on hit if you cast despair in the past 10 seconds so this works from our mines the mines will apply wither when they hit a enemy and as we have so many mines all of the time you get max stacks in just one second or so but this also makes it so you will have to cast despair for yourself it does not uh, enable this if you are just triggering so do keep that in mind you will have to self cast this uh, but 10 seconds is quite a long time and for the last two one we have a forbidden flesh with forbidden flame and this is going to be to allocate the juggernaut for the ascendant and uh, this is uh, really strong actually so you get juggernaut from this you get uh, the thousand flat accuracy rating which is just huge for this build and you get also cannot be shield cannot be stunned which is really great and then also some increased damage per endurance charge and we also gain endurance charges every second if you've been hit recently so this just helped with some defense overall as well here huge point and those only cost me three divides for the two of them in total but when you are starting out gladiator is the one that you want to go for first and here we get the 50 percent chance to block from equipped shield instead of the shield's value so this so this basically make this shield uh, it by default have 23 percent it now has 50 really huge for this build and the survivability from it is crazy we also get to deal one percent more damage with hits and ailments to rares and unique enemies for every two seconds up to 50 percent this doesn't really have the time to ramp up for some bosses it might but uh, the 50 percent block is the one that they want from this node and then we're picking up a cultist and it's going to be so we can apply one additional curse and also make the curse a little bit more stronger so that's what we get from our ascendancy let's take a look on our flask so we have a divine flask with instant recovery here and also with some bleed removal we have a quartz flask and this is going to be like a panic button so we can run through enemies and also this gives us immune to freeze which is uh, the one that we're still lacking for this build an iron flask is a must have for this build and also the increased ward during effect is really important here as it will increase the total ward that we are using bottle of fate we went over this a little bit before but uh, when you pop this 
get huge consecrated ground around us and uh, you also get increased crit chance here on enemies to stand on the consecrated ground which is really important i also made a enchant so the effects from the floss get uh, with increased effect so this will just boost this by a shit ton and just pop this bad boy on all the bosses and lastly just a quick silver increased duration with increased movement speed on it and for the pantheons we're using soul of lunaris and this is going to be for the physical damage reduction you get some increased movement speed for nearby enemies chance to avoid projectiles which is really good reduce elemental damage taken and uh, also avoid projectiles that has been chained and this is really nice to have when playing ward and for the lesser one soul of relicash uh, and this is going to be for the bleed as we don't yet have corrupted blood immunity and uh, once we get this i'm probably going to change this to soul of abrath instead which will help with some of the degen you get less duration of ignites on you and unaffected by burning ground really helps out and for the bandits i went and saved alera and that's for the 15 percent to elemental resistant it just uh, really helps out with the build it is uh, quite starving at the moment but if you manage to get those resist you can just kill all or just change it afterwards right really simple to get the one extra passive point so if you take a look on the pub we have an average damage hit around 3 million and a combined dps by 44 and uh, yeah, effective hit pull is uh, decent, I guess. Everything else is pretty horrible. But uh, yeah, Ward. We have Ward. It's uh, something I don't have played with like anything. I've done some Ward builds or tried them out. And uh, yeah, it feels uh, kind of weird actually, I must say. But uh, once you get those high numbers up, it's actually quite nice. I barely die at all, I must say. Mostly it's usually just on some boss fights, but that's just because I suck on the boss mechanics. So it's nothing to do with the defense overall. Uh, you can actually take quite a bit of hits. Uh, we get some uh, resist and the block chance, right? And as mentioned earlier, uh, all I need to get is just a better shield with some more block chance on it. And uh, the spell block will get capped. So let's take a look on our links here. And the links we are using is going to be Power Siphon, Charge Mines, Increased Critical Damage, Trap and Mine Damage, Locust Mine, and then Void Manipulation. Next up we have a Arcanist Brand and it's going to be linked with Despair and also Sniper's Mark. And this is something that you want to uh, pop on uh, bosses or harder elites. Then we also have a uh, Shield Charge linked with Life Tap and Faster Attack. And this is just for mobility. And we also have with a flame dash if you want to, as shield charge can't uh, go through obstacles. And the flame dash can. And then on our shield, the shield is uh, triggering elemental spells. We have a purity flame here. And this is only going to be for the consecrated ground that it provides. And this combined with uh, the bottle of fate, it actually works as long as the bottle of fate is on, right? So you do get uh, some extra from this by that. Despair is something that we are using manually. So we are pressing this and that's for uh, the withers from the jewel. And then Ice Golem, this just procs once in a while and we get some increased critical strike chance from this and also accuracy. Precision, Aura, get crit chance and accuracy. Skitterbots for mine damage and these also apply shield and shock and we are linking these with unbound elements and these are going to make it so uh, the shield and shock will get increased in effect from this so that's why we are using this one and then we have tempest shield and this grants us 25 percent chance to block spell damage while wielding a shield and you also get immunity to shock by using this which is really nice and uh, then we have some automations here and we have detonate mine so we don't have to use that manually and also a val molten shell and this will proc the normal molten shell and we can use val version when on the bosses and just link this with enhance for some increased quality and you do have some improvements that you can do that i don't have uh, for example you can get the despair on hit on gloves if you corrupt them this is something that will help you just overall while mapping and bossing and all like that, applying that all of the time. 
You can do the same with a ring. If you have a hunter base, you have a chance to get despair on hit for uh, the ring as well. And also for the helmet, here you can get uh, plus one power charge, which is going to be also huge as uh, you get so much multipliers from that. And uh, increase to uh, maximum energy shield is something that you can also look for on your shield here as a corrupted implicit. So what do you think about the board stacking Ascendant Miner? Have you tried it before or tried another version of it? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!